Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi. I'm not so sure which season we are in right now, but we've been rolling, we've been having awesome conversations with leaders and practitioners in the development field, in social impact, in impact investing. Uh, a conversation at a time, uh, a story at a time, leaders and practitioners have been telling us how it is that they have made it to where they are. Their inspiring stories have given us insights and perspectives that are absolutely impacting our own, uh, our own perspectives about this particular field, our humanizing development. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very privileged to have a person who used to be my CEO, a mentor of mine. Uh, he is the CEO of I Choose Life Africa. Just recently, in 2021, he was listed as among the top 100 Kenyans, uh, a list of very distinguished and well-achieved Kenyans in various sectors. He is also an elder in, uh, at the Nairobi Chapel, charged with planning. He's an author of various publications and books, among them Kenya Mpia, uh, which is about selecting and holding leaders to account. Among the many things he does is he's also overseeing the development of various programs around um, health, education, economic empowerment, leadership and governance, as well as institutional strengthening. He's a father and a husband. Ladies and gentlemen, he's also a mentor to many. And today, he is sitting with me here on DD with Maxi, a platform where we are doing storytelling for social impact. Michael Mutungi, the engineer himself, welcome very much to this platform. Thank Let's you. give Thank him you. a round of applause. We'll do that on, on, the, on, on the platform. Karibu sana to this platform and Thank we're you. looking forward to having you here. Karibu Thank sana. You. Asante. Asante. We are really, yes. really delighted. I'm looking forward to it too. And at a, at a yes. critical time in your yes. life when yes. you are just studying uh, yeah. your jubilee, yeah, yes. you know, yeah. very, very, yes. very happy yes. that you can yeah. come and share your insights. Yes. How does it feel to be graying very well? <laughs> You know, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to yeah. be able to begin looking back in terms of what I've done. Yes. You know, age uh, sort of catches up. Yes. And sometimes you don't have time to sort of package and put together what you've learned. Yeah. And thank you for putting it together because it forces, it forces me to reflect back. I, I am very happy that yeah. you get to reflect back, you get yes. to look back at, um, yeah. at five decades of your life yes. uh, on this platform. Absolutely. At five decades of impact, yes. so to speak, yes. um, you've impacted. Yeah. Uh, what so many people yeah. in, in in Kenya, yeah. in East Africa, in Africa, yeah. all yeah. over the world, yes. who passed through your hands yeah. and through the hands of I Choose Life, and yeah. who gone ahead to become mighty giants and yes. mighty captains in, yeah. in their respective industries, and so. Uh, and um, we just would like to probably begin mm -hmm. where it mm -hmm. all began. Yes. Where is Mike Mutungi from? What are the origins of of, uh, <laughs> of, of Mike Mutungi? <laughs> So I come from, um, let me go back and tribute to my grandfather because yes. we just had cousins uh, uh, get together about, uh, actually two started ago. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my grandfather, Nyanzi, mm -hmm. had four wives. Oh, wow. And I think he fought suddenly in the first and second world war. Exactly. And uh, so in the midst of that, he then, when he came back from the war, mm -hmm. uh, he became a lawyer. It's actually, my uncle was just showing me a book that is featured in the book as one of those eminent persons, the lawyer, he used to pick up law cases. All right. And uh, in the in Okambani region. Yes. And present them with, among the colonial government. Okay. And the reason I bring that up is because he had four wives, so my cousins are many, as you imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> you come from one of those families that uh, you can't quite identify just how many you are. Yes. Yes. And so there's a time an, uh, an auntie of mine mm -hmm. uh, had passed on, mm -hmm. and I'd been invited to the, to the, to the funeral. Mm -hmm. And so I sat at the house, and then I asked my uncle, uh, I see everybody here, but why is Auntie Victoria? Yeah. Then everybody stops and looks at me and says, What's the matter with you? Don't you know you are an anti Victoria's funeral? Oh, wow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then I realized then we are so many, we don't know each other. Uh -huh. 
So then I said, as cousins, you need to begin getting together. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, get together once, once a quarter. Yeah. They appointed me as the chair of the cousins uh, meeting. So we get together once a quarter. That's really powerful. So Nyansi gave birth to Mutungi, mm-hmm. who I'm named after. All right. Now, Mutungi was also in the military, my dad. Mm-hmm. And um, and then when he came from, from the war, yeah. he went into business. Sorry, let's stick with him a little bit. He was in the military as who? Well. He was. Uh, he, he served in Burma okay. and other places. All right. In the first. In the first. I think it's World War. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and and so when he came back, mm-hmm. he went into business. All right. In the sixties, late sixties, mm-hmm. he suddenly, my family had the nine vehicles. Oh. Okay. Buses, lorries. Mm-hmm. So just before I was born, yeah. you know, ex- my family was extremely rich. My dad was very rich, mm-hmm. and um, and your dad. So your grandfather is Mutungi. My grandfather is Nyanzi. Nyanzi. So if you are traveling from a Chakos to Kalamari, you see a lot of Yekos that are named Nyanzi. Mm-hmm. So those who end up with my family name and my grand, my uncle is actually an MC in Kalamari. All right. So Nyanzi is my grandfather, yes. the lawyer. Okay, the lawyer. Then my dad. Yeah. Is Mutungi the businessman? Okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> and so and I was born with that. So my my brother, when they were growing up, yeah, when they left, when they came from school, mm-hmm. he would gather the boys around the village mm-hmm. to come and count money at home mm-hmm. because the money used to be in sacks. Oh, so they would count the money mm-hmm. in sacks and then they go at the bank. Oh my! So really, that's that's a born in uh, in lower wealth. Well, initially. <laughs> So my father, my father, believe it or not, he actually studied Akamba Bar Service. Oh, okay. <laughs> the famous Akamba Bar Service. The famous Akamba, which was taken away from him. He got into bad uh, business. You know, he did not understand intellectual property. Okay. So then, you know, some people uh, got into business with him and they took it over from him. And whatever yeah. happened to Akamba, anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a family that I was in before, actually before I was born. Okay. Extremely rich, mm-hmm. lots of uh, property. Mm-hmm. Then, just before I was born, mm-hmm. my mother was a very staunch Christian. So now this is your mother. My so. mother, mm-hmm. her name is Mudel, mm-hmm. and uh, she is. I know everybody praises their mothers, mm-hmm. but uh, she's really the godless person that I've ever met. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, mm-hmm. she basically had memorized pretty much the whole Bible. Oh wow. And they're very influential. So when all this wealth was going on, mm-hmm. she noticed there was a lot of unhappiness in the family. Mm-hmm. And so she began praying that God would take all the wealth away. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so she really began praying and asking God, you know, this wealth is not a blessing. Please take it away. That is an interesting prayer. Yes. But so, it's uh, meaningful because of what it's, I mean, for the reason you've given. Yes. Mm-hmm. So overnight, mm-hmm. We lost everything. Okay. My father lost all the buses, the lorries. We even uh, sold uh, this Tala motel. If you go to Tala, there's a motel where my family used to live in. Yeah. Even that one, uh, he got it got sold, and we went to live with my grandmother. So explain the loss, though. Like how how did the loss was, other than the prayer? Yeah. Like what like sale bad. Management. It's just the buses would break down, mm. the lorries would break down, accidents, you know, within a very short time. It was all gone. Oh my. Yeah. And we don't even have a home. We don't have a home. Wow. So when I was being born, I was born now uh, when that uh, just disappeared. Okay. So you are not necessarily born into. No, I wasn't born into wealth. The wealth. Yes. That yeah. a lot of your family had before. Yes, my brothers, my elder brothers and sisters mm. were born into. Well, they experienced it, but not you. Yeah, so like uh, Major, mm-hmm. my brother Silla, who was Major in the military, he mm-hmm. was born, he was actually born in that world at home, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was known as a rich, rich kid, rich kid's rich dad, kids, rich yeah. kid's uh, son. Rich sons, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but for me, I was born in that. So when I was born, mm-hmm. uh, there wasn't much around. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lived with my grandmother, then mm-hmm. after that, we went to live with my uncle. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, we built our own home. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's really, you know, wow. uh, uh, my background in terms of where it comes from. Yeah. And then, because then we were struggling financially, yeah. 
then my brother, mm-hmm. Major Sila, asked if he could take me from Sharks mm-hmm. and bring me to Nairobi yeah. uh, so that I can then go to school in Nairobi. I think he recognized that if I went to schools in Sharks, mm-hmm. I, would, uh, I would probably not succeed. You know, I don't do well in education. Right. And everybody could see my potential. So yeah. he brought me uh, when from Standard 2. Right. Yeah, it's Standard 3, I came to Kahawa Primary School. Kahawa in Kahawa, it's with Kahawa. Kahawa the barracks. Barracks, yes. The barracks. Yes. What is Garrison now? Yes, Kahawa okay. Garrison. It actually was set up in the Kahawa Garrison. So you studied basically in the military school? Yes. In the I, military setting? Yes, I mm. grew up. So all my upbringing, really, mm. it's really a military family, you know. So you can imagine. Tell, t- tell me about that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Because. Yeah.